In my former life, I was once a lifeguard uh, before I was a pastor. And there, during my spring break of senior year, we had training. One of the drills, I'll never forget, it actually came to help me later on when I would jump into a lake and, and use it, was one of us had to be distressed and the other one had to jump in for the save. But this drill was unique because the distressed one would actually grab onto the lifeguard, which happens quite often, that they're not even thinking, they're panicking, and they take the lifeguard under uh, because they're scared. And so we had to practice throwing off their arms and then coming behind them underneath their arms to swim them in, keep their head above water for the save. And of course, we were teenagers, so we'd make this kind of hard for the lifeguard, right? Uh, so I would use that later to jump into a lake, and, and the very same thing happened to me. The person grabbed me, and I took him from behind and took him in. The reason I use this vivid example today is because I think it's a picture of our spiritual situation every single day. Whether we realize it or not, we are up against currents and waves and storms and sharks and all these things that are beyond our control. There are things in this world we just cannot fix and that, that really frustrates us. There are spiritual forces, the Bible says, at work behind world leaders and governments, and, and there will be till the end of time, till Judgment Day. There's a spiritual force at work inside of us that just does not cooperate with God, and, and it frustrates us so much, it just wants to do its own thing. And then there's that enemy we face every sing, single day as we age, as we have pain, our own mortality. These are currents that no matter how hard we work and try, we just cannot keep our heads above water. Ultimately, it's, they're going to get to us. And so today, I want you to see the, the only one who can jump into those waters with you, plunge into them, and, and rescue you. That's the one who shows up at, right where you are, struggling, going under, and calls you to follow him. We see him in Mark's Gospel, chapter 8. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Well, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. The Christian cannot hear these words of Jesus today and be unmoved. You cannot hear these words in a casual way. These are loaded words. These words are meant to challenge us. This call of Jesus on your life and mine is radical. It is an all-in call. It, the one who went all-in for us calls us to be all-in for him. About 10 years ago when I was an intern, an uh, elder of the church I was at asked me, what are you preaching on tomorrow? And I kind of swallowed hard and I was preaching on this. I said, well, you know when Jesus calls us to deny ourselves? I'm, I'm going to explain it like Jesus says, say no to yourself and say yes to God. Uh, say no to your pride, to your ego, to trying to be your own Bible through life, to being your own savior, 
and say yes to God and cling to him all the more in his promises. And, and the elder said back to me, wow, nobody wants to hear that. He was honest, but he was supportive too. And isn't that right? Like, don't we want to hear the, the advice of the world that as we're struggling and trying to keep above water, the world tells us just work harder, just try harder, just do my five steps and hit like and subscribe to my page. Doesn't that sound better to us? Because then at least I have some control. Who of us here has not tried to fix ourselves, to improve our lives, to, to make things better, only to find that the harder we try, all of a sudden, in an instant, all that work can be undone. We fail, we relapse, something happens out of our control, and we're right back where we started or worse off than before. No. Deny yourselves, Jesus says. As you listen to this today, it is a challenging call, it is a radical, but I don't want you to leave today thinking, I was just told to do more things, to do one more thing, to try harder. No. What I want you to hear today in the words of Jesus, deny yourself, is actually to give up. To give up in this way, to surrender to God. To let go of trying to be your own Bible and Savior. And to cling more onto Jesus. I think this author talks about self-denial in, in a quicker way, in a better way than I could say it. Self-denial is that trust which abandons all thoughts of the contrary and simply clings to Jesus and his word. And I want you to see yourself in these examples. Heartache that won't go away, tears of anguish that come in the night, fear that shadows the dawn, uncaring friends, cruel enemies, no one who really understands, all of that is relieved by a self-denial by which the afflicted abandons himself or herself to the person and work and promises of Jesus. Jesus says it this way, whoever wants to be my disciple must, not, not optional, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. But Jesus, I thought you died on the cross. I thought you paid for all my sins and there was nothing left to do. What, what is this about carrying my little cross? What is this about denying myself? This is hard. Indeed, Jesus did carry the big cross. He did pay for all of your sins. This is not what forgives your sins and makes you right with God. But this is, this is the Christian life. This is life with God in this world. Okay? This is the struggle. Picking up your cross. What is that? We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Jesus is calling you here to go against the very grain of your nature. The very grain of your old life, of what comes naturally to you. Jesus is calling you to replace your biggest dreams, ambitions, and goals, and wants, and desires, and loves with him. That's what it means to deny yourself and to follow him. Jesus is not calling you to do something he hasn't already done. It's a pattern he set, but also something that he's going to give you the power and strength to do. You're going to get closer to him and rely on him as you follow him in this way. Okay, Jesus said no to himself and yes to God the Father, right? Jesus didn't want to die. He didn't want to be rejected. He didn't want to suffer for all you and I have, have done wrong. He didn't want to take the blame for how we've loved the things of this world more than God and people in this world more than God, but he did because he said no to himself. He surrendered himself. He abandoned his agenda 
and he accepted God's agenda for him. He said yes to his father. He submitted himself to his father. And the Christ, the anointed king from God, actually came to save his people. He plunged into the waters that were drowning you and me. He got blamed for how we've loved this world more than God. He took the blame. He went all in for you. He utterly loved you to the end and came back again on his resurrection. And now he calls you to go all in on him. Because he's always all in on you. That's what this call is today. Whew. Deny myself. Take up my cross and follow him. Because Jesus carried the big one, okay? Now he calls you to carry your little ones. What is a cross that I am to accept and pick it up and carry it with the strength God gives me? It is anything that comes because of my faith in Jesus. It is the struggle that comes because of my faith in Jesus. It is any pressure to turn from God, to go your own way. It is any, any pressure, any challenge, any ridicule, any making fun of, any people who pull back from you or disagree with you or attack you because of your faith in Jesus. It is just living in this world that's going to constantly be going against the grain of the followers of Jesus. Some of you have shared stories with me that the more you want to be in God's word and apply his word to your lives, the more this, this pressure comes. Okay? Some people pull away. Some people pick fun at you because you're different. You're trying something different. And that, that's the pressure. That's the cross that you're called to carry. This is a miracle. Anytime you are following Jesus putting aside your agenda for his, picking up your little cross, which is going to give you splinters and it's going to feel heavy at times and you're not going to want to carry it, and you're saying no to yourself and yes to God, this is a miracle. God comes to the unwilling, makes their hearts willing by the gospel, and then dwells in the willing. Okay? It is an ongoing miracle of God for you to pray like this, for your self-talk to sound like this. God, I have big feelings right now. Here's what I want. Here's what I think I need, the way I think my life should go for life to be worth it and for life to be good. But as strong as those feelings are, God, help me say no to myself because I don't need that. I only need my Savior. When I have you, I can go through my worst nightmares, through my worst days. I can even go th face my own death. And you will lead me through. That is the prayer of a struggling Christian carrying their cross, denying themselves and following Jesus. Jesus says it one more way. And here's where, really where he calls us to go all in. How can you go all, all in more than this? Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. I, I have heard those words my whole life and I've always like, struggled because right there's a part of me that revolts against this, this call of Jesus today. There's a part of me that wants to maintain my own independence and freedom. But Jesus is calling me even to abandon that to him. Anything I've built my life on, career, health, relationships, those are temporary, changing, decaying, here and now things that are not forever. That's the call. To lose your life to save it. You lose your life to find your real life in Jesus. The call is to build your life, your identity, your everything on someone who will always have your back and who will be there forever and who will not change. Look for yourself, C.S. Lewis says, and you'll find in the long run only hatred, loneliness, despair, rage, ruin, and decay. But look for Christ, and you'll find him, and with him everything else thrown in. 
One of my friends who, who works in the valley pretty much said this quote in another way. He observed, he's like, I wonder if, myself included, a lot of us right now are just living for pleasure. We're so unhappy with our lives, so we medicate ourselves. We just want one more hit of pleasure, one more weekend out, one more night away, one more vacation. If I'm using those things in that way, just for a selfish gain, it's going to end up a miserable dead end. That's what selfishness, where it leads. That's what C.S. Lewis is saying. If you only look for yourself, okay, it's going to end in misery. Reach the end of yourself. Lose your life to save it. Look to Christ and there you find everything you've been looking for. How can we do this without support, encouragement? How can we even understand this and apply it to what's really going on in our life? That's what we're talking about with our grow pillar at Emmanuel. Just one thing to try this fall, okay? Normal isn't working. We're flailing, we're, we're panicking, we're in over our heads, right? We are here to support each other. You showing up and rubbing shoulders with other people. It's, it's, yes, it's about you and it's about them, right? And so how do we do that? That's what our Bible studies, our events, our growth groups are all about. Try a marriage night. You've never tried it or it's been a while. We have a guest pastor and his wife coming in October. It's just a night out and you grow in your faith. Try the women's conference. Try the women's Bible study on God's gift of time. Right? Put your priorities in line. Try the men's study on Psalm 23. Just try something, one thing. One way of growing in your faith, making this real to your life. What was your picture of Jesus coming in today? What is, it, what is it as radical as what he said? That call, that all-in call to follow him? Peter needed his views of Jesus expanded, right? Peter had a little part of him, a big part of him, that still, he saw Jesus as the Christ, that was correct, but then he thought, Jesus, you're just here to make my be life better right now. And Jesus said, no, get behind me, Satan. You don't have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. That's what we're talking about today, replacing our agendas with Jesus's. That's his call, and here you see a more complete picture of Jesus, a picture of your Savior who jumped in the waters and saved you. Latch on to him, cling to him, and let him swim you into shore, to those heavenly shores, all the way where you weep, and carry your crosses no more. Amen.